This is an NBC News special report. Here's Kate Snow. Good day, everyone. President Trump about to take questions from reporters at the White House, where he's meeting at this hour with the prime minister of Spain. The president has a very full plate today. Talk about the hurricane disaster in Puerto Rico. In fact, the president said just this morning that he would pay a visit to Puerto Rico next Tuesday. Also, the crisis with North Korea dominating attention, the ongoing struggles over health care on Capitol Hill and tax reform. And of course, the firestorm now in its fifth day over President Trump's comments and criticism of NFL protests. NBC White House correspondent Hallie Jackson is with us in the Rose Garden waiting for the president. Uh, Hallie, it could go a lot of different directions today. You just named five big headlines, Kate, and here comes the president, so let's see what she will address. Kate, back to you. Of the government of Spain. Thank you very much, everybody. Please be seated. Good afternoon. I'm greatly honored to welcome President Mariano Rajoy of Spain. And it's a great honor to have you at the White House. Thank you very much. We've just concluded a very productive conversation on a crucial range of economic and security issues. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to send America's hearts and prayers to the people of Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Both have been devastated, and I mean absolutely devastated, by Hurricane Maria, and we're doing everything in our power to help the hard-hit people of both places, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. A massive effort is underway, and we have been really treated very, very nicely by the governor and by everybody else. They know how hard we're working and what a good job we're doing. As we speak, FEMA, our great first responders, and all available federal resources, including the military, are being marshaled to save lives, protect families, and begin a long and very, very difficult restoration process. I have directed all relevant departments and agencies to assist in the response and recovery effort. As Governor Rossello just told me this morning, the entire federal workforce is doing great work in Puerto Rico. And I appreciated his saying it. And he's saying it to anybody that will listen. Our team has been incredible after having gone through Texas and then Florida with other stops along the way. And he further went on, he said, and through the Trump administration's leadership, the relationship between FEMA and my team is very, very strong. I will be going to Puerto Rico on Tuesday. I'll also be going to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Over the last several weeks, our nation has been tested by the destructive force of Mother Nature. But we will respond to it with an even mightier force. The resolve of the American spirit, Texas, Louisiana, and Florida, are in really good shape and moving along well. We thank all of the first responders and volunteers who have risked their lives, and that's what they did. They risked their lives. To all of those impacted by the trouble and these horrible hurricanes and storms that have affected and impacted our country, I thank you. The recovery process will be a very, very difficult one. We will get through this, and we will get through it together. We will be stronger. We will be bigger. We will be better. Thank you very much. The United States and Spain are great friends and close allies. Our bonds, culture, and commerce go back many centuries. Our schools teach American children about Spain's history of exploration. Our museums treasure beautiful Spanish works of art and your country's contributions to architecture, music, and film are admired all over the world. It's a greatly admired country. The deep relationship between our two people is a strong foundation for lasting cooperation. On behalf of the American people, I want to express our support and extend our prayers to all of those affected by the vile terror attack in Spain last month. I want to assure the people of Spain that America stands with you in confronting this evil that threatens all of humanity. 
We will continue to deny the terrorists their funding, their territory, and any form of support for their wicked ideology. In this common fight, America greatly appreciates Spain's contribution to the coalition to defeat ISIS. Spanish troops and police have trained more than 30,000 members of the Iraqi security forces. We also thank the Spanish people for being such gracious hosts to the American service members stationed at Spanish bases. The United States and Spain together face many critical dangers and challenges, from North Korea to Iran to Venezuela. We thank Spain for its recent decision to expel its North Korean ambassador and for standing with us in our efforts to isolate the brutal North Korean regime. It is time for all responsible nations to join forces to isolate the North Korean menace. North Korean nuclear weapons and missile development threaten the entire world with unthinkable loss of life. All nations must act now to ensure the regime's complete denuclearization. I appreciate the United Nations Security Council voting twice, unanimously, 15 to nothing, twice, to adopt hard-hitting resolutions against North Korea. I have recently issued tough new sanctions against those who do business with this outlaw regime, and I applaud China's latest action to restrict its trade with North Korea. And in particular, I applaud China for breaking off all banking relationships with North Korea, something that people would have thought unthinkable even two months ago. I want to thank President Xi. Here in the Western Hemisphere, we have seen the heartbreaking tragedy of Maduro's socialist rule in Venezuela. Spain has been especially helpful in promoting the interests and well-being of the Venezuelan people, and we thank you for your efforts. We hope our friends in the EU will soon follow the United States, Canada, and many Latin American nations in sanctioning the Maduro regime. We need everybody involved. The citizens of Venezuela have endured immense suffering, poverty, starvation, and dangerous political unrest under Maduro's oppressive socialist regime. Together, Spain and the United States hope for peace, for the restoration of democracy, and for the release of all political prisoners. Wherever socialism spreads, misery follows. The people of Venezuela deserve a future of freedom. These are great people. In the economic arena, we support trade that benefits both Spain and the United States, which means it must be fair and it must be reciprocal. Such an important word. Hasn't been used very much in the United States. Reciprocal. Spain is the 10th largest investor in the United States, and I commend Spanish business leaders for their confidence in America and the American worker in considering the fact that our stock market has just hit all-time highs. I think they probably like the United States very much right now. This is a time for both tremendous opportunity for our world, but also serious dangers. As I said at the United Nations, which future really is up to us. If we empower our citizens, serve their needs, and appeal to all that is best in the human spirit, then I have no doubt we will succeed like never, ever before. Mr. President, I look forward to working with you to build this future of prosperity and peace for both Spain and for the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. As the Prime Minister of Spain speaks now, we'll take a, a moment here to pause and we'll keep listening uh, with one ear to what he's saying. But uh, I want to turn to my colleagues. I want to start with Kristen Welker, who's down on the North Lawn in Washington outside the White House. And Kristen, uh, the president's starting forcefully talking about Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands and the devastation we've seen there, announcing that he will visit both places next week. 
That's right, Kate. President Trump really trying to put the focus on the federal government's response to uh, the hurricane aftermath in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, not only announcing his plans to visit, but also announcing that the federal government will be providing more aid. It comes as we're learning about a meeting he's going to be having in the Situation Room in about a half an hour from now with a number of his principals to discuss the hurricane response. Uh, this comes, of course, as he says, uh, we have seen record-setting hurricanes this season. That will be met, he says, with uh, even more uh, action from the federal government. Uh, and after the federal government approved $7.9 billion in hurricane relief after Hurricane Harvey, Kate, you can expect that number to increase. Now, President Trump spent the weekend tweeting about the NFL, criticizing protesters to the NFL. He got a lot of criticism for that. It is clear he is trying to shift the focus to these hurricanes where they are asking the federal government for more help, Kate. Although, of course, he may be asked uh, possibly about the NFL situation. So we're Indeed. keeping an ear as we continue to talk. We're keeping an ear on this press conference. I want to turn to Andrea Mitchell, uh, who's with me in the studio. Mm -hmm. Richard Engel is also with us in our London bureau. But let me start with you, Andrea, on North Korea. Uh, we just heard the president again force saying all nations must come together exactly. to make sure it is not uh, a nuclear nation. Different from what he said last week at the UN, or, or is this the same message? This is a, a more restrained message in a way, because this is the kind of language you would expect from the American president, not rocket man, little Kim, not the taunting messages that many experts believe did lead to Kim Jong-un in an unprecedented fashion going on camera and responding to the U.S. president and raising the, the rhetoric back and forth and making it a very personal, uh, escalating, rhetorical right. war of words. Last night, he said, we are at war, that the U.S. has declared war were his words, right? Well, that, that is because, directly because President Trump said to the United Nations, we will destroy North Korea. So this is a, a call to action, and in fact, we're expecting uh, the Treasury is going to be announcing more sanctions. They already as the president referenced, uh, had the UN vote, and President Xi has gone along with that with the Central Bank of China. So they're taking the kind of actions you would expect. And in a way, as we've heard from the Defense Secretary Mattis today in India, and also from Secretary Tillerson at State, saying that they're looking for a diplomatic way out of this crisis and trying to avoid a miscalculation. Richard Engel, uh, our chief foreign correspondent over in London. Uh, Richard, he was, the president was very specifically applauding China and what China has done to try to isolate North Korea. And I think that's welcome. I, I totally agree with Andrea Mitchell. Uh, it does, you don't exactly know which Trump you're going to get on a given day. Uh, today, he was looking at his notes and he was praising the international community. He was calling for unity. Uh, he was praising China. He was praising the UN. Uh, very typical, very presidential kinds of statements. Uh, the kind of statements that military experts I'm speaking to want to hear from the United States. They say it is time to get out of the, uh, the business of the tweets of the personal attacks because it will only escalate it and it could lead to a potential miscalculation and even a, a potential conflict. So, uh, at least in the prepared portion of the comments, very positive. But we will see what happens when he is asked questions, when he's not speaking from his notes, if he goes back to the other more off-the-cuff uh, Trump that we have seen so many times that does engage in these personal attacks uh, that have his advisors so, so nervous and has uh, the entire Korean peninsula, if not, if not the world, on edge. And in fact, as Richard is just pointing out, when we don't know which Trump is going to show up, the family, the parents of Otto Warmbier spoke today on Fox News very emotionally against the regime. The young man who, was, who they came home murdered from North their Korea. son. And this has been a touch point, an emotional touch point with the president. And if he's asked a question about Otto Warmbier and the parents, the other Trump, the rhetorical Trump, may show up at this, at this press conference to come. Comments on a couple of other uh, international regions. Well, he talked about ISIS and the attack in Spain, which has been a big, I mean, he's standing there next to the prime minister of Spain. And Andrea, this has been a huge issue in Spain, the way, you know, the way that attack was handled there by their government. He also talked about Venezuela, which we haven't heard very much about, but you cover the State Department. You, you talk about this every day. Uh, fill our, our viewers in on what he's saying there, what the message is. Well, he has added Venezuela and North Korea to the list of countries the banned countries so that it is no longer, they would claim, just a Muslim ban of seven countries. They've taken Sudan out of the equation and added North Korea and Venezuela. 
So this is something that they just did in this new executive order in the last couple of days, and they're really trying to emphasize that Venezuela is a real threat. Yeah, something they're, they're trying to focus on. Uh, Andrea, stand by. We're continuing to monitor the Rose Garden and the press conference, which is still underway, uh, the, the leader of Spain speaking right now. But I want to go to Capitol Hill briefly. Uh, Casey Hunt is there for us, and it is a fast-moving day on Capitol Hill because the health care bill that Republicans thought they might be able to get through the Senate uh, appears in deep jeopardy. Casey, what do we know? That's right, Kate, and uh, this is a little packed in here because everyone is waiting for Mitch McConnell to uh, come to the podium right here where we are and give us a status update about whether or not he will actually put this health care bill that Senators Lindsey Graham and Bill Cassidy have been pushing on the floor of the Senate. He said last week that that was his intention, but we are hearing from senators that we are talking to in the hallways in and around. They're behind closed doors right now in their weekly policy lunches talking this over. Senators we've uh, spoken to as that has been ongoing have said that they expect that there will not be a vote and that that's what Senator McConnell will come to these microphones and definitively say. So we are still waiting on that. And if it, if it is in fact how it plays out, it's going to be uh, an embarrassing day for Republicans. This is the second time that they have had a health care repeal and replace effort fail. Uh, and that, of course, is their top priority. Kate. All right. Casey Hunt on Capitol Hill watching that. Let's go back to the president speaking in the Rose Garden. Don't get nervous, Steve. We're preoccupied with the NFL instead of dealing with Puerto Rico. Why isn't that a fair assessment? Well, I wasn't preoccupied with the NFL. I was uh, ashamed of what was taking place because, to me, that was a very important moment. I don't think you can disrespect our country, our flag, our national anthem. Uh, to me, the NFL situation is a very important situation. I've heard that before about was I preoccupied. Not at all. Not at all. I have plenty of time on my hands. All I do is work. And to be honest with you, that's an important function of working. It's called respect for our country. Many people have died. Many, many people. Many people are so horribly injured. I was at Walter Reed Hospital recently, and I saw so many great young people, and they're missing legs, and they're missing arms, and they've been so badly injured. And they were fighting for our country. They were fighting for our flag. They were fighting for our national anthem. And for people to disrespect that by kneeling during the playing of our national anthem, I think, is disgraceful. So uh, I will also say that, again, I read you part of his quote, but the governor of Puerto Rico is so thankful for the great job that we're doing. We did a great job in Texas, a great job in Florida, a great job in Louisiana. We hit little pieces of Georgia and Alabama. And uh, frankly, we're doing — and it's the most difficult job because it's on the island. It's on an island in the middle of the ocean. It's out in the ocean. You can't just drive your trucks there from other states. And uh, the governor said, we are doing a great job. In fact, he thanked me specifically for FEMA and all of the first responders in Puerto Rico. And we're also mentioning with that the U.S. Virgin Islands. It was devastated. So we are totally focused on that. But at the same time, it doesn't take me long to put out a wrong, and maybe we'll get it right. I think it's a very important thing for the NFL to not allow people to kneel during the playing of our national anthem, to respect our country and to respect our flag. Okay? Thank you. If I could ask the uh, Prime Minister. If I could ask you a Prime Minister question. Uh, is it going to take a war to reign in North Korea? And what is your advice uh, to the President on dealing with this? Bien, eh, ninguno tenemos interés en que haya ninguna guerra. No one wishes for there to be a war anywhere in the world, but it's true that the recent events in North Korea, with uh, implications in the neighboring countries, very important countries, and uh, means that uh, we all have to be forceful, and those of us who defend the values of democracy, freedom, and human rights have to let. North Korea know that it isn't going anywhere in that direction. For the time being, sanctions have been adopted. Spain will support any political decision which will contribute to putting an end to uh, this uh, situation, which has nothing to do with the principles and values most of uh, Western and global democracies defend.
gracias. Buenas tardes, José Miguel Thank Blanco. Thank you, José Miguel Blanco from FA. We don't know whether during your conversation you discussed uh, the Catalan situation, and this is a question for President Trump. Do you uh, support what the Spanish government is doing regarding Catalonia? And I'd like to ask uh, the president of the Spanish government whether uh, he fears they might be a unilateral declaration of independence in Catalonia, and what would the government do then? Well, I think that uh, Spain is a great country, and it should remain united. We're dealing with a great, great country, and it should remain united. I've been watching that unfold, but it's actually been unfolding for centuries. And I think that uh, nobody knows if they're going to have a vote. I think the president would say they're not going to have a vote. But I think that the people would be uh, very much opposed to that. I can say, only speaking for myself, I would like to see Spain continue to be united. Bien, eh, the decision to unilaterally declare independence is not something uh, I would, it's not a decision I would make, it's a decision which will have to be made or not by the Catalan government. I think it would be uh, very wrong. And I think that right now, when everyone knows that the referendum can't take place because there isn't an electoral committee, there isn't a team at the Catalan government organizing the referendum, uh, uh, there aren't ballots, there aren't people uh, at the voting station. So. Um, it's just crazy. All this will lead to is uh, noise, but uh, certainly there can't be a valid democratic uh, referendum with guarantees, with minimum guarantees. I think that what would make sense in a situation such as this is to go back to common sense and put an end to this whole story. The only thing it's doing is generating division, tensions, and it's not uh, contributing in any way to uh, um, the citizen situation. So I want this to be resolved as soon as possible, uh, and I want us to go into a new stage where the rule of law, dialogue, and common sense will prevail. Thank you. Thank you. Major Garrett, yes, CBS. Yes, hi. Hours away. And you have a special meeting. Are you contemplating the deployment of special naval assets or air assets to Puerto Rico to redress problems there? And on North Korea, very quickly, the foreign minister said you have declared effectively war on North Korea, and the North Korean government has threatened to shoot down or aim at American planes flying in international airspace. I'd like your reaction. Okay, well, I'll answer the second one first. We are totally prepared for the second option, not a preferred option. But if we take that option, it will be devastating. I can tell you that, devastating for North Korea. That's called the military option. If we have to take it, we will. He's acting very badly. He's saying things that should never, ever be said. And we're replying to those things, but it's a reply. It's not an original statement, it's a reply. But the things that he said over the last year, and if you look back, the things that he said to past administrations, North Korea is a situation that should have been handled 25 years ago, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, and five years ago, and it could have been handled much more easily. You had various administrations, many administrations, which left me a mess. But I'll fix the mess. So we'll see what happens with North Korea. As far as Puerto Rico is concerned, I think just the opposite. We have had tremendous reviews from government officials, as we have in Texas and Louisiana, and as we have in Florida, as you know, from Governor Scott and uh, Greg Abbott, great governors. And this morning, the governor made incredible statements about how well we're doing. We understand it's a disaster. It's a disaster that just happened. Uh, the grid was in bad shape before the storm. And Puerto Rico didn't get hit by one hurricane, got hit by two hurricanes. And they were among the biggest we've ever seen, with the second one being even worse. I mean, the second one hit Puerto Rico as a Category 5. I don't believe anybody's ever seen that happen before. 
hit land with that kind of velocity. The governor has been extremely generous, and I appreciated it. We right now have our top people from FEMA, and they have been there. We are unloading, on an hourly basis, massive loads of water and food and supplies for Puerto Rico. And this isn't like Florida, where we can go right up the spine, or like Texas, where we go right down the middle and we distribute. This is, you know, a thing called the Atlantic Ocean. This is tough stuff. The governor has been so incredible in his, in his statements about the job we're doing. We're doing a great job. Don't forget, their police force has been decimated because many of the police in Puerto Rico have lost their homes. So, sure, they want to be police, but they also want to be able to watch their families and find their families, and they have to live. So we're also very much involved in security in Puerto Rico. So everybody has said it's amazing the job that we've done in Puerto Rico. We're very proud of it. And I'm going there on Tuesday. Now, with all of that being said, record Record, if you look at the, the amount of water dropped on that island between the two hurricanes, and the first they just barely got by with, but they were devastated, and the second was a complete wipeout. I mean, this was a, a place that was destroyed. So uh, I think we've done a really good job. We're continuing to. We are literally unloading on an hourly basis water, food, supplies. We have our top people from FEMA and our first responders and everybody else. We're going to be deploying Navy ships. They've already been deployed. And uh, we are going to do far more than anybody else would ever be able to do. And we're, it's being recognized as such. But it is, it is a tough situation. Would you have a question for the President? Mr. Prime Minister, if I may, sir, do you share President Trump's hostility toward the Venezuelan regime? And what is your opinion generally of his, that is to say, President Trump's suggestion that U.S. military intervention might be required if the Venezuelan government doesn't change course. Do you support that? And would you be an advocate within the EU for tougher sanctions against the Venezuelan government? Mire, nosotros estamos eh, liderando en la Unión Europea. We're spearheading in the European Union a proposal to impose sanctions on Venezuela. What is happening in Venezuela is unacceptable. Venezuela traditionally was a democratic country, and at this time it's no longer a democratic country. There are political prisoners in Venezuela. There are people who are in jail only because they think uh, differently than Mr. Maduro. And I was the first uh, Prime Minister to receive Lilian Tintori, who's uh, the wife of Leopoldo López, who was jailed because Mr. Maduro didn't like him. But there were many others who were sent to jail. In Venezuela, there was a parliament, and the government has made up this other parliament, which uh, is, has its meeting next to the other parliament, and it enacts legislation. They've created a commission for the truth, which is an anti-democratic tool, which only serves to judge people without respecting minimum human rights standards. Uh, Venezuela is on the road to dictatorship unless that can be stopped. So all of those who share values such as democracy, freedom, and human rights have to do something. At this time, sanctions are important. It's important that there be an international coalition putting pressure on Maduro so that political prisoners are freed and democracy is restored, because this lack of democracy and the attack against human rights and freedoms are uh, come in conjunction with uh, economic, um, a, a terrible economic situation with a 300 percent inflation rate with problems supplying foods and medicines to people. So it's a really tragic situation. And I think that we have, uh, we, the United States and Spain, have a responsibility towards Venezuela. There are a lot of Spaniards living in Venezuela, and I'm worried about them, about them and the rest. But they certainly worry me. So I think that the international community uh, it should be forceful with regards to Venezuela. Gracias. Buenas tardes. Thank you. Pilar Santos from El Periódico de Catalunya. I have a question for each of you, for President Trump. With the serious uh, political crisis in Spain because of the referendum on Sunday, what solution do you think there is? Have you given advice to President Rajoy on this matter? Do you think there should be uh, a dialogue between the, the Generalitat and the government to find a solution? And now a question for uh, Prime Minister Rajoy. It seems that uh, 
what you're doing in Catalonia, the way you're managing uh, things in Catalonia, is having an impact on the budget. And I'd also like to know whether you think that the situation with the PNV party can be resolved, or do you think that there will you will have to call early elections? Thank you very much. Well, I think the people of Catalonia have been talking about this for a long time, but I bet you if you had uh, accurate numbers and accurate polling, you'd find that they love their country, they love Spain, and they wouldn't leave. So I'm just for United Spain. I, I speak as the President of the United States, uh, as somebody that has great respect for your President and also has great, really great respect for your country. I really think the people of Catalonia would stay with Spain. I think it would be foolish not to, because you're talking about staying with a truly great, beautiful, and very historic country. Thank you. We will be delaying um, the budget uh, in Parliament because uh, we think that uh, when we submit the budgets, we will need the needed support to approve them. We're talking with different political parties, as you know, and uh, I don't think we'll have any problems if uh, we continue to work down this line. We will, I don't think we'll, we'll have any problems in approving them within a reasonable time frame, but we are looking for a majority just like we did last time around when we voted the budget. At any rate, I'm not thinking at all about calling early elections as a result of what we were saying. Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, President Trump with the Spanish Prime Minister wrapping up a news conference in the Rose Garden covering a lot of different territory. Uh, in just a moment, I want to get to our reporter who's standing there in the Rose Garden, Hallie Jackson, our White House correspondent. And Hallie, uh, I guess we could start with Puerto Rico because that's one of the headlines out of this. The president uh, not only saying that he's going there, but I think I counted three or four times he said, I, I've been told by the local officials there, by the yeah. governor, that we are doing well, that we're providing everything that's needed. He seemed to, to want to make Make that clear. And you're right, Kate. He repeatedly made that point that he believes things are going great. He acknowledged that it is a disaster uh, what's happening in Puerto Rico several times, correctly noting that it is an island in the middle of the ocean. It is difficult to get supplies to. Uh, but those were sort of the, the fundamental pieces that he put into play here. I would note he actually added to his schedule. He's leaving the, the Rose Garden here to head into a meeting specifically related to disaster relief for Puerto Rico. This was a late addition to his schedule and perhaps in response to some of the briefings that the president has been getting over the last 24 hours or so. So uh, I would say you're right that Puerto Rico was one of the big headlines here and the president promising more help. Of course, the Puerto Rican governor has been begging for help, has been putting up an urgent cry, calling this a humanitarian crisis. Let me just note, though, he also touched on what has become a big controversy over these last several days, which has been these NFL athletes taking a knee in protest. It started with Colin Kaepernick last year protesting what he viewed as social injustice. The president said he was ashamed to see that and does not believe that he is, in fact, distracting from other key agenda items of his, like, for example, tax reform, Kate, which which we'll talk about tomorrow. Uh, and like, for example, health care, as it looks like the third attempt to repeal and replace Obamacare in Congress is all but dead, Kate. Yeah, Hallie, thank you so much. We're just getting word, Andrea Mitchell, that mm. as we were listening to the president up on Capitol Hill, the Senate Majority, uh, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said there will be no vote on health care. That's another major defeat for Republicans and for the, for the White House. And the fact that they, they ginned this up so quickly, so late in the game, they didn't give the Congressional Budget Office time to do anything we, except we a very sketchy uh, analysis of it. They were actually redoing it Sunday night, Monday morning to try to sweeten it for Kentucky, Alaska, Maine to get perhaps peel off Rand Paul or Lisa Murkowski. They didn't have the votes. The president very stridently blaming John McCain, but it wasn't just John McCain. It was others. And, and Susan Collins said that this would really hurt people with pre-existing conditions. It would not properly protect those who most need health care. A Republican so, senator. Exactly. And at the end of the day, there were simply too many Republican senators that weren't ready to go along with this health care bill. Apparently, Mitch McConnell has said that they may postpone the vote and try it again after they deal with tax reform, which they've said may take through December. We'll have much more on all of these 
news headlines throughout the day on MSNBC and NBCNews.com. Lester Holt will have a full wrap-up tonight on NBC Nightly News. For now, I'm Kate Snow, NBC News in New York.